So welcome everyone. Yeah. Uh, let me introduce myself and my colleague. I'm Joseph uh, and this is Peter. We both work for Red Hat and uh, we are going to lead this workshop today. It's uh, about uh, Docker and it should prepare you for the whole track, uh, the whole container track that is uh, uh, upcoming uh, for this uh, conference and uh, first I will tell you what uh, this is going to be about and then what it's not going to be about because uh, what we're going to start with is uh, just uh, setting up the environment so we can do uh, the steps the workshop itself and uh, we will uh, be during your, the time you are setting up your computer, we will give uh, some introduction to the container technology, uh, the background of it, and uh, a little bit of the history. And uh, then we will speak about uh, Docker, what Docker is, how it works, what it does, and uh, uh, this will be hands-on workshop, so you will be trying uh, all those uh, examples on your own. And what's What's, uh, what this presentation is not about, it's uh, why you should use uh, uh, Docker, because th there will be a whole container track and you, will, you can pick uh, presentations and uh, they will be more specific. This is only introduction, what it is. And uh, we are not going to talk about content of the container because all of the other talks 
actually talk about the contents. So, uh, a little note, how to participate. Uh, as I said, uh, you will need uh, the Docker program on your uh, machine. I hope that I have helped uh, everyone. Uh, who, if you need, if there's anyone who still needs a help, just raise your hand and I will come to help you. Okay? Yes. <coughs> it's better to run it uh, natively on, uh, uh, on Linux. If you don't have the, uh, the chance, we give you the virtual, virtual uh, machines on, on the flash drive. Okay, so I will hand over to Peter and he will say something about containers. Oh yeah, and uh, little, little uh, dance side note here is uh, if you have a question, just raise your hand, fire it. Uh, we are here to, here to help you. So don't hesitate and just shoot it. And of course, enjoy yourself. Uh, okay, so no issues, right? Uh, if you are, like, uh, as uh, Joseph said, uh, if you have any problems, like, like uh, raise your hand, and one of us, probably the one who is not uh, speaking, will come to you and help you. Uh, okay, so while we are trying or uh, setting these uh, things up, uh, I will try to ask you a question, and if you can ask, uh, answer it in like in one sentence or in like few words, uh, what do you, what do you say if I ask you what is a container? Anybody? No. Did anyone use the Docker before, like trying? Uh, trying some uh, simple stuff or anything? <coughs> Just put your hands up. Okay, so, all right. All right, so I'll, I'll answer this question for you. And um, just, to, um, just to make it uh, uh, kind of understandable in the virtualized world, uh, let's, uh, let's say that actually there is no container, but don't leave yet, please. Uh, we we have uh, constraint applications, and by application I mean uh, application is one or more running processes. Okay, so uh, why do I say this? Uh, when we want to try to compare uh, containers to the virtual machines, and we want to run an application in virtual machines, we usually do that we create the virtual machines, install it, set it, set it up somehow, uh, log into it, uh, start the applications, and then we start using the applications. Uh, so we can, uh, the application in the virtual machine, we can, we can like stop, but the virtual machine as it is, it will, it will stay and will exist. But on the other hand, container, it actually does not. It, it can't exist without the application running inside it. Once we stop the applications, the container quits. So we can create empty container, right? This is like uh, important uh, to understand. So you can see the differences virtu between virtual machines and the containers. Like, yeah. So uh, when we talk about containers and uh, this whole uh, conference is mo all the, the most of the conferences about it, uh, we actually talk about multiple, uh, multiple Linux kernel features configured together for one or set of processes or for an application. So uh, uh, there is, like again, uh, multiple kernel features configured together, meaning that um, the uh, meaning that all not all are like dependent on the uh, dependent on each other or um, or like uh, anything <laughs> to uh, that. Uh, what I want to say is that. Uh, Every the every kernel the those kernel features must be configured like uh, in the independent way, so uh, we can uh, we can do like um, uh, we can have like um, uh, um, various levels of isolation inside the container, right? 
We can configure the container so it uh, has access to the host networking, but we can configure containers so it doesn't, and so on. Uh, so, now about the Docker. Docker is actually a platform for running, shipping, and building containers. Uh, we, in this workshop, we will look into running and shipping, but we will don't talk about building containers because we don't have enough time for that. And uh, <coughs> when you start Docker and install Docker, you start the Docker daemon on your host, which uh, is responsible for managing containers on, the, on your host. So, uh, as I said, uh, when containers are, or technology used for containers is kernel features, uh, it is true that containers are actually pretty old. And uh, a reason why Docker is now a kind of hype is that uh, Docker provided a whole platform. Meaning that uh, not only Docker allows you to run containers, but it allows you to build and ship them. So uh, for the other versions of content containerization platform or how to say, they usually allow you to only run the containers, like systemd nspawn or I think OpenVS and so on. But they don't allow to easily create the image and ship it to from one computer to another. So Docker solved this issue, make it uh, pretty easy, and uh, that, that's why um, like so many people are using it today. Okay, any questions to the theoretical intro? Is there something you don't understand? Okay, I'll give my uh, word now to Josef, who will talk about Docker images. Right, so uh, what is uh, cool about Docker is actually the packaging uh, of uh, the application and its dependencies uh, to one single uni uh, unit. We call it an image. It is immutable and you can ship it to any computer which is capable of running Docker where it can be uh, instantiated and uh, the, that's uh, actually, when we instantiate uh, the image, we call it a container. And uh, it uh, can you, an image is usually uh, composed of uh, the application itself and uh, its dependencies, but it uh, ha can have, uh, we call it a minimal o uh, operating system, but it actually is not. Uh, there in the container, there never is uh, the kernel. It uses uh, the kernel of the host. So when you see an image called Fedora or uh, Ubuntu, it actually is not uh, the operating system. It's only the binaries that make it easy to work with it. Uh, let's say in context of Fedora, a uh, very, uh, very good binary is uh, the DNF installer. So we can uh, download another packages and grow your container. And uh, uh, if you don't really need these uh, uh, tools, you can only package uh, your application and the dependencies which, uh, uh, which you need in the, in the container, in the image. So you can have uh, one gigabyte uh, image for, let's say, called uh, Java on Ubuntu. And you can very, very well uh, have uh, one megabyte image, which would be one uh, statically compiled application. So that's the big uh, difference between these two. When you see really uh, an image called Fedora, it, it is not a uh, virtual machine, it is not uh, operating system, it's only called uh, because Fedora because it contains uh, the applications, the, the tools you are used to using uh, on Fedora. And, uh, for distributing uh, the Docker images, uh, there are uh, rep repositories, and uh, there is actually one repository uh, managed by the company Docker. And uh, uh, when you identify the image, uh, the, rep the source repository is part uh, of, uh, of the uh, fully qualified name. So in context of Red Hat, our repository runs at registry.actor.redhat.com. That's the repository, but if you don't actually specify the repository, the Docker uh, defaults to the docker.io, which is uh, the Docker uh, repository. 
it's uh, available on hub.docker.io and uh, you can see all the images available. Uh, in the Red Hat registry, we'll uh, of course uh, find uh, our products that are tested. And uh, the other part of uh, the fully qualified name is uh, author of the image. In this context, uh, we use JBoss. It could be uh, some team or outer uh, person of the image. And then the name of the image itself. So in this case, it is the application server uh, built for the OpenShift environment. And the last part is tech, which is a version of the image. And uh, that, that way you can easily build several versions. And what is cool about uh, Docker and the uh, application in which we use it, we can not only uh, upgrade from one version to another very easily, but we can also downgrade. And downgrading uh, has usually been very difficult and uh, with containers, uh, with shipping applications as, contain as images, it's uh, quite easy. Okay, uh, let's do a stress test to our internet. <laughs> Uh, for this workshop, we will need some images, so let's download them now. Uh, there is a command for downloading uh, Docker, Docker pool, and really the vocabulary, vocabulary is similar to Git. You can do Docker pool, Docker push, Docker commit, and uh, it really does what you expect it for to, to do. It's very similar to to Git, so it's actually quite quite easy to start with Docker. Docker pool is the command which uh, downloads images from a registry. You specify uh, the registry, the author, and uh, the image and the version as I uh, showed on the previous slide. So let's have a look at it. It's just a command docker pool, and then you specify who is the author, or what is the, what is the image itself, uh, where it is published and what is the tag. You see we put here docker.io, but uh, if you don't specify any repository, it all and always defaults to docker.io. So you could just uh, do docker pool Fedora, and it would by default uh, download uh, Fedora from docker.io uh, docker uh, at the latest version. Uh, uh, the second part, the creator, uh, all of the second part, uh, there is the outer. The outer. outer yeah. So uh, you didn't put the outer in here. Uh, so is it also a default outer? Yeah. Uh, uh, there's like special kind of images, uh, like uh, official ones, uh, which doesn't have outer. So if you like download Fedora, it's uh, and uh, for example, if you find it on Docker Hub, it says it's official image, so it's like don't have an out outer. Like. Okay. Yeah, that's like WordPress, uh, CentOS, MariaDB, Metal. Yeah, there are a couple of these. Okay. Yes. <coughs> they are like uh, kind of official images. Uh, for example, the CentOS image uh, is uh, published for uh, from was uh, was built by the people from the CentOS community. It's kind of uh, the the star on Twitter. If if you use Twitter, uh, you know that there are. Usually, uh, celebrities and famous people. Barack Obama has the star because he's cer uh, certified, or uh, it's, it's his official account. It's not someone else. So this is the same way. Okay, and now, how, how does the internet work? Is it? Can you download it? Yeah, it's slow. Once you download it, you can list the images. I hope we'll get to it uh, before we end, <laughs> before our, our time sums up. Uh, the command for listing images is uh, docker images. Okay, anyone who has downloaded the image yet? Okay. Question? Question, yeah. Um, where are the images from? Um, uh, sorry? Uh, uh, you mean when you download them yeah. uh, on your computer? Do you need some? Yeah. Uh, uh, there will be multiple layers. 
and start in. You mean uh, the path to it? Yes, that's. Uh, I think Varlit Docker. Yeah, Varlit Docker. Varlit Docker. I think. Yeah, but it will be it will be some hash. You, you won't see actually version Fedora. And those who are using the VirtualBox, uh, this image should be already present on there. So when you when you issue the command Docker pool Fedora, it should say it's located on the computer. And there is a command which you don't have to issue just right now. And uh, that's a uh, docker remove image. So please don't do it because you have to wait uh, another 10 minutes to get it, uh, get it locally. Actually, um, when you create applications, it doesn't uh, use uh, the image like for writing. It creates overlay layer and uh, create uh, saves changes only on write to the different uh, di different layer. So you can have like um, you can you can uh, download image, create application or, or multiple application from it. Uh, you can uh, update the image and create new applications from the updated, from the updated image, but the old application will stay using the older version of the image. Okay. So do I have multiple versions of that image? When I shut down the uh, running application, can I run it from the old image? Or uh, yes, you can. You have an uh, older version of the image, and um, actually the image is... Um, it's a layer, so the, the one image contains multiple layers of the data. Mm -hmm. And uh, the image is um, like, uh, like a description of the layers. Okay. So it's version, so then I can, in my yeah. post, I can then just yes. go back to different versions, yeah. and yeah. they're all versions there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that means that all the binaries, libraries, anything I download with a given image is still there. Yeah. So, is there so I guess there is probably a way to clean it up, so for example, Say that I just I want just the last version of the Docker image. I just want to remove all the previous version. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And the second question: What is the virtual size? If I type Docker image, what is the virtual size? It's a virtual size. I don't know. Um, I, I think, think it's it should, uh, be, it should it's. I think it's size when you uh, uh, extract the image. So the when we are actually down when you are pulling images, you are downloading tar file, and uh, I think uh, the tar file might be smaller than the virtual size. Yes. So when you download the image, <coughs> you always download the whole image. It's not that you would have just a part of it and needed some other part from it like that. Uh, how how images work? Uh, they are layered, and when you build uh, the image, you build a new layer, uh, several new layers, and uh, then the whole image is actually composed of uh, five or thirteen layers. So what was the layer? Like what do you mean by layer? Yeah, uh, it's actually uh, it is uh, ar an archive. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, what you, I, I think what you want, uh, want to ask uh, when you're creating a Docker image, you are using a Docker file, and Docker file consists of a set of commands. The commands are executed from uh, top to bottom, and uh, for every command there is a layer. 
So when I on the uh, when I create one uh, command like uh, dnf install httpd, it will install httpd and create layer committed. Then another command is like uh, add my add my configuration files. It will add configurations and commit the layer again. So, you so like snapshots on what yeah, exactly. So configure. when you uh, so when you want to just <laughs> change the configuration and create new image, the downloading part isn't done again, but uh, only the it will add only the new layer with the changed configuration. What's the purpose of the layer then? Uh, it's uh, I, actually I don't know why it it's created or exactly this way. Uh, one way it's optimizing. For example, if you have uh, two images, uh, <coughs> uh, both built on CentOS, one is for uh, HTPD, uh, second is for MariaDB, and when you pull um, do, uh, both images and they have like uh, same base, you don't downloading twice the base. You can share it. You all you always build a new image. Always. Yeah. yeah. When uh, there's new version, you rebuild the image and publish it to the registry. And what about uh, the running containers? Uh, I don't know if there yes. is. So ideally, ideally, the state uh, of the application should be uh, persisted, yeah. and you should uh, run a new uh, new uh, container, mm -hmm. and the old old one uh, erase. Okay. So. I, I'm sure at this conference there will be a lot of talks about Kubernetes and OpenShift, and that's actually uh, the orchestrators uh, that uh, do it automatically. That uh, if you need to scale up, they will publish uh, several new, new new containers automatically. I can show you show you uh, command line. Yes, perfect. Uh, when we are talking about the layers of the image, when I list my uh, uh, my images, okay. Well, so what we can see here, at least basically, here is a CentOS, CentOS image, and it has about 200 megabytes. And you see the whole images. It uh, this this uh, this record it aggregates every record aggregate, aggregates all of the layers, but I can issue uh, all, and here now I can see all the layers. So you see there is the, the tag is none because <coughs> the tag is uh, corresponding to the uh, top layer of the image. And uh, as Peter said, it's optimization that uh, you can share uh, several layers and uh, uh, build new ones only when uh, there is a difference between the layers. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, Vagrant is for managing uh, the virtual machines. Yeah. Uh, like uh, uh, it is or, or kind of, or, of orchestrator for you can uh, use KVM or or VirtualBox, but uh, containers are not virtual machines. Yeah, those are isolated processes actually. So, um, yeah, so yeah, the background is just uh, an orchestrator tool working above the virtualizations uh, tools, but I think it has a driver already for Docker. So, uh, on on the you can like co configure the configuration or, co or configure the vagrant, but uh, it will translate the commands to the Docker and use the Docker or the virtual machine KVM and so on. Right. So it's uh, just a tool on the different abstraction level. Okay. So how is the downloading going? Still downloading.
what does it actually do? Like the, the library and an application layer on the top of the kernel, which like defines Fedora, right? And defines CentOS. So does that have the things from two distributions in one host? Or uh, if they are shared? I don't think that Fedora and CentOS uh, uh, they are not shared. But uh, it's like uh, it's this is similar like virtual uh, virtual <coughs> machine image, right? You can download multiple ma virtual machines ahead. Uh, this is the idea is the same. Like um, when we say about Fedora Docker image, it's like a super minimal uh, file system with uh, programs and uh, libraries just to basically install another software with so the DNF command works. So what, what, uh, what can I use this for? Yeah. If I have Docker, if, if, etc., if what, what can I use this for? Well, so as, uh, as there is the DNF command available already, mm -hmm. so you can super easily create your applications above it. So when you create the new Docker image, the first command is usually uh, from something, and uh, that's meaning base image. So you can create a new image from the Fedora base image. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can install there like my Apache mm, or my ma, uh, or you install Apache there, like with DNF install HTTP and create your custom configuration there. Okay. So it's like a template Docker image which I can then start with. Yeah. Or you yes. Or yes. Or Usually yeah. there is Bash and we are using it like for experimenting and trying stuff and so on. But for the production, you want to yeah package or install another software there and package that. So when I have a do dockerized application, then that application, but because the docker you said is the, is the, is the content, is the, is the list of the Linux kernel functions, right, features. Yeah. And uh, so then, uh, if I have, for example, I know HTTPD, mm -hmm. uh, the HTTPD is using libraries from the hosting operating system? No, uh, it's using library, all libraries for HTTP must be contained in the image. So, there, so the application within the Docker container yeah. is not using any of the anything on the only kernel of the host, oh. only kernel, and all the linking uh, dynamic libraries must be in the uh, in the con in the image. Uh, so, so either if I use uh, Fedora as uh, base, it's perfectly usable on CentOS. As yes. The Fedora is just uh, base. Ah, I see. Exactly. Okay. okay. If you know. Uh, uh, Root, H root, right. so this is like H root on steroids. So, right, okay. With and uh, so, okay. how, how much is the Docker image configurable? Like, can I allow something, for example, can I allow the HTTP to see the other libraries within the hosting operating system? Uh, usually no. No, no you can, uh, you can uh, allow it to see the host networking, for example, otherwise it is isolated. Uh, you can, uh, well, actually, you, yes, you can. There, there are concept like uh, s there is concept like privileged container and the super privileged containers. Um, I don't want to talk much about it. You, I guess, you will hear about it uh, on the in, in the conference. But uh, you can allow, yeah, you can give uh, basically any permission to the so container. So the idea is that the Docker image should be the minimal image set of libraries for the given application. Yes, exactly. And uh, everything, all the libraries are not there, and obviously also the and it's using the, the shared kernel for all the other kernels. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, why we uh, why we package the why we we are doing it with the Fedora or we are saying that it's it's based on Fedora? It's because uh, we have a, like pretty good system for installing uh, applications with uh, dependency resolving and so on and so on, right? So you are perfectly able to compile HTTP yourself, like add all the necessary libraries and like put it in the image and package it and ship it. But uh, yeah, it's much harder for you and it's not as effective. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Docker is written in Go, so it's uh, statically linked and have everything in the binary. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, there's only dependencies the kernel on the host. Windows or macOS doesn't support. There was some announcement that uh, this year it should be available in, uh, in uh, Windows Server yeah. 2016. So, yeah, I heard about it. When the same Docker image would switch Yeah. Because then, they then the kernel must provide the same function, right? Yeah. The same API and all that. No, they, they can write some variable for it. <coughs> external. I, I don't know how Microsoft is going to do that. But uh, they say it, it, they will be able to do it in this year. Does Microsoft support native developer? No. Um, which is like a uh, web application management of the server and it, it does support Docker images, Docker containers, Kubernetes. So you can uh, just click and do stuff. I know, but I mean like uh, uh, you can run inside of Docker. Oh, yeah. I, no, okay, sorry, uh, no, I understand. Uh, there is an uh, initiative, or it's, I think it's called XDGA app or something like that. It's, uh, they are working as part of the GNOME, GNOME? part of the GNOME, and uh, they are trying to yeah run a, they are trying to run a GUI applications as containers, but it's much harder as there are much more dependencies with the system and so on. But uh, I think some applications are, are already running there. And I think they want to uh, like move all the applications to containers for the portability and. Yeah, easier than common and so on. So. Okay, so let's uh, continue in the presentation, and I hope that uh, I will show you just uh, some basic commands, and uh, I hope that by the time uh, you will have all of your images downloaded, and so it will be easy to keep up because those are very basic, uh, very basic commands, and uh, let's talk about. Uh, how to now we uh, we have the image or we should have <laughs> the image and we want to instantiate it we want to, to create a container from that image there is a <coughs> command for it uh, called uh, uh, docker create and uh, you will give it uh, the name of the image and also some uh, parameters uh, what to do with it so in this case we'd like to instantiate uh, the fedora image and uh, the process to be run inside uh, would be bash. So what we need for bash is uh, we need to interact with the container. So there will be a switch for it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, very, important, uh, very important and uh, good practice is to always give your container a name. If you don't do it, uh, Docker will generate uh, a hex uh, hexa ID. Every every container is uh, identified by uh, the hex ID internally, and uh, for uh, as a human readable way of uh, uh, naming uh, the containers, we can give them uh, aliases. So it's very good practice to always give it uh, an alias. There is uh, the switch name for it. Okay, and to, to interact with the with the running container is uh, the switch. I and also we want to uh, uh, be able to connect it so uh, allocate a pseudo terminal uh, the switch uh, T and you can also write them together and it's a kind of nice command docker create create it 
and name of the image and name of the process you want to run inside. So if I try Okay, so this is the hex, uh, the internal ID of uh, the new layer of the image. And so <coughs> is here anyone who has downloaded uh, the image yet? One, couple, okay, perfect. So when we issue the command, you see uh, the ID of uh, the container. And uh, let's have a look at the container. There is uh, the command docker ps, which lists all containers. But this one, which we just created, is not running. So when you issue just the bare docker ps, you won't see it. But there is uh, a uh, switch all, the little a as all, and then you will be able to see the image uh, of the, the container which we just created, but it is not running. So we will proceed to actually starting starting uh, the new container. And there is command start. And it does, uh, it is very similar to the create. You specify uh, the container which you want to start and uh, you still want to interact with it because we created uh, the container to run interactive bash. So don't forget uh, to use uh, the I switch. And because the terminal has been allocated, you only want to attach to it. You don't uh, need to al allocate a new one, you only attach to the existing one. And uh, that's it. If you issue this command, you have a uh, running uh, the container and you are interacting with the container through your command line. And uh, the process running in the container is bash, so you can use all the uh, features or all the binaries located in the Fedora, Fedora image. Still downloading? The container doesn't update the Docker bound, so, mm. so uh, you actually you need to destroy the container and create a new one. Okay, so that's why you should uh, keep the data separate, uh, keep the logic and uh, data separate, so you can uh, create new container with new application, but using the same old data. The question was uh, kind of similar to the one we heard previously, so. I don't do a little drawing. We don't want to do uh, to go deep in, in the technicals because this is the introduction. But uh, let's very let's have a very very short look at it. When you in, uh, download the image, it itself is immutable. You have to always create uh, a new image for a change. And when you run uh, a container, you create a new layer on top of uh, all of the <coughs> layers which uh, co are comp composing uh, the image. So yes, you can run several versions. Okay, uh, we have started uh, a new container 
And uh, to re remove this container to save the memory is a uh, basic uh, remove command. You give it name of uh, the image. And in case the container is, yes? Speak up just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so to remove the container, uh, when the container is still running, you can force the remove. And uh, there is the switch uh, R, uh, so F3, as, uh, as uh, in usual, usual commands. Now, when you issue this command, when you remove this uh, container, what you actually remove is uh, the top layer which you created for, for the, this container. Okay, so we pulled the image, we started a container, or we created first uh, the container and then we started it. You can do this automatically when you, uh, there is a command run, which is actually create and start together and it has uh, absolute, uh, absolutely the same uh, same uh, switches. So it's the same <coughs> as we saw with the Docker create. Uh, you specify the image you want to uh, instantiate, the process you want to run inside, and uh, of course give it some nice name, so you don't uh, have to refer to it uh, as the hex number. And uh, we are using, in this case, bash, so we want to attach uh, 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 to be able to interact with it. And uh, switch we haven't showed yet is uh, remove. And what it does, once uh, you exit from this container, it will automatically remove the top layer. Okay, so just a little check. Uh, how many of you are still downloading the images? <coughs> okay, so you see, as uh, in previous example, you have a running uh, container. Okay, and I will pass the word to Peter. Okay, so uh, when you have uh, the image downloaded, uh, we can now just uh, play with it a little bit. And uh, we will look around the content of the container and on the host. So, um, around the create the Fedora image as you did, uh, or as uh, it was described here. Uh, with docker run it so we can uh, we have the interactive shell to specify the rm command which is useful when you are just uh, playing around and when you just stop the container uh, the docker will automatically delete it uh, before uh, issuing uh, docker run uh, we have to issue docker start uh, no docker run uh, consists of two commands like in internally it will create and start the image uh, together If you created the uh, the image before with Docker create and uh, have the same name, you first need to delete the old one with the Docker RM command. <coughs> and when you in, when you start the uh, the container, install those packages inside. Uh, because as I said, um, when uh, installing and uh, updating uh, packages should be always done during the uh, during the image build. So when you so when you yeah so when you starting or when you want when you want to update the the container, you should update the image create a new image, push it to the registry, and on the node where you're running uh, containers, you just do uh, docker pull, pull and uh, create a new container for, with the new version. So that's like a ideal world, right? So it's, it should be done this way, but uh, it's not possible.
possible that always so yeah I understand. So for now as so you see uh, I don't have any running container. I maybe just a little bit. But I do have my Fedora container, so I will remove that one. Okay, I create the new one with the command I set. So I just mark Fedora. Fedora. And I want bash inside. Okay, so yeah, I created container, I connected to it, but uh, what I actually said, I did. I just started isolated bash process. Yeah, that that's that's it. So uh, I want to install the meshed packages. <coughs> Hopefully it won't take too long. Oh, maybe it will. Oh, it's written better. So you said it is the best best practice. So why are you? I'm doing this. Uh, I'm doing it for um, for exercise purposes, right? Okay. I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to use this image for production. So. So, uh, and then, so you said that the the proper way of updating or creating. Uh, you create the new image with updated uh, with uh, new version of packages. Okay, so let's say I want to update. I, I want to have a new image. This one with the bash and with I don't know. Yeah. Well, what I should what I should do or, or what I should uh, did ideally I should create new image like like uh, Fedora Docker one hundred one. Install all the packages and publish it publish it to the registry. So you do it from within the container. Then you from the container, you create a new container. Yeah, uh, when you are when you are doing the uh, when you are creating images, uh, as you said, uh, as I said, uh, you have um, Docker file containing uh, the command, but Docker is doing like this same thing. It will create the container, uh, inst run the, the then install command inside the container and commit the changes as and creates the new layer. Right. Okay. So, so you do it with this command. Yes, you do it with this command, but you should do it in the Docker file so it's uh, so it's uh, automatic and uh, repeatable and so on. Yeah. Uh, one more question: What is the, is this? Uh, you need to push uh, every new image to the repository, or you can use your local. Uh, if you are running, uh, if you are running uh, yeah. Docker containers only on one host, you sure you don't need to pu push it anywhere. But uh, again, good practice is that in your company or in your network you have registry running and uh, you have nodes which are only building images and nodes uh, which are running containers. So on the nodes uh, we, when we build, where you are build images, you build their images there, you push it to the registry and all the nodes <coughs> will download the image. Uh, what does mean uh, run register server? It's just service like yeah, it's uh, it's uh, REST API. I think it's with curl. You can download the uh, okay. uh, the layers on the layers. Yeah, it's uh, it's also distributed as Docker container without the graphical interface. But there are also services with graphical interface where you can search and and you see all the. Yes, yes. Also, it's actually part of the OpenShift. So when you install OpenShift, the registry is there. No. It's not good. I should do it. Excuse me? Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, it's it's a text file. It's text file. Mm, well, like there are there are commands only for uh, Docker file. Like uh, if you want to run some bash command, you need to specify the run and the command. But the, there's uh, there's some uh, meta commands like name, version, author, and so on. And yeah, it just. Uh, So you said you, you usually have one host uh, where you build the image, uh, and then you have another host where you run the image. Yep. Uh, once the, the uh, so so you create the, the Docker file uh, built on some particular host. You build the image, yep. then the image exists, yep. and this image uh, has not be uh, has, has not to be built again. So it can be just taken as is, uh, shipped to one host and uh, the application uh, compiled inside uh, then runs in immediately. For yeah, you. exactly. Yeah, okay. that's it. Like a uh, super easy Docker file, I just googled. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I specified from uh, I specified the base image. I want to create uh, my new image. This this can be like Fedora CentOS, as we said, or it can be like here we can see Apache Apache two, meaning that. Uh, meaning that the um, original image already will have uh, Apache installed, but I will just add there some other uh, applications on libraries and so on. Uh, the adding the applications is just apt-get update uh, or, or DNF install and so on. Usually this is also back practice, so it shouldn't be there. Uh, so you install the required package packages by, uh, by you and clear the cache, which is good practice. And in the end, uh, oh, just come on, it's somehow broken. All right, so. Ah, see, here it is. Yeah. And uh, as the bar card, we, we specify the command which should be run by default when we uh, start the image and don't specify the command. For Fedora, we have to specify the bash command because by default there is like no command specified. It's like a uh, general image, so there's nothing to be run. But uh, when I have specified image like here and I want the Apache to be run there, uh, I'll specify the command and uh, when uh, using the docker run, I'll just do docker run Apache 2 with something and it, uh, it will start the service inside it. You said uh, apt-get uh, update is also a uh, bad practice. Yeah. So uh, how to get the, the latest sources? You should uh, update the base image. OK, and the, uh, the updated base images are always available on the yeah, Docker Yeah, they're, they're uh, on the Docker Hub. When you publish the images, there's like uh, something called like automated build, meaning that you, when uh, you set up like watching your base image, and when the base image changes, uh, your image will be automatically rebuilt with the new base. Okay. So uh, the uh, like the original base, like Fedora, isn't uh, isn't done with uh, uh, DNF install because like there's nothing. So they are creating like uh, like archive just with the files, like copy the minimal file system there and something like that. I don't know exactly. Yes, we will get to it. Okay. Uh, you told uh, my image is automatically rebuilt. If I want to uh, set up or build my application on particular version of the Docker file, uh, it's uh, sufficient 
not to uh, not to uh, build on the latest version, but if I specify some yeah. some precise version, yeah. then for, it's, uh, for example, Fedora. Let's take it. Uh, you have Fedora like 22, 23, mm -hmm. and so on. So you can specify like specify like from Fedora uh, colon 23. So it it will stay with the la always latest twenty three version of Fedora. So no, no, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to assign some IP address for the Docker file and access this container from the host? Uh, you don't do this in a Docker file. Mm -hmm. You need uh, in the well, uh, there are a couple of. Uh, considerations <laughs> like uh, when you are running uh, your application in containers like on multiple hosts so there needs to be overlay network and for that you need orchestrator like Kubernetes OpenShift which will take care about the uh, networking and IP addresses uh, the information like from one uh, container to another one how to get the information is uh, usually using environment variables so when you link two containers together uh, the one container can uh, expose or inject environment variables to the new one containing the IP address and the port and all the required informations. So nothing is hard coded, and uh, in the, your configuration, you just use the variable. Mm -hmm. And then you use the variable. So uh, if I have one host uh, and then I have multiple containers, say instances of the same application, like say, say yeah. or whatever, and then I want to have all of them have different IP addresses, but does that mean that all the IP addresses are on the level? Docker daemon creates a virtual bridge and uh, every container contains uh, contains virtual networking device connected to that bridge. So Docker daemon creates, uh, by default, I think it's uh, 172.16 uh, something network mm -hmm. and all the containers contains IP address from this network. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that Uh, external, you mean what? Yeah. And then there is a bridge. Yeah. And then there is a public thing. No, right. So I'm sorry. I, I, I was it's, it's not it, like by default. So it's, it has access to internet. Okay, uh, but uh, you can uh, you can also use transparent routing, or do you always have to use a uh, netted network? Uh, you can expose usually expose a port from the container on the host. So, um, so this is transparent, uh, transparently routed to the, to the Docker image. So it's yeah, not yeah, netted. Because yeah. in uh, some applications you can, you cannot really use uh, netting. Yeah, uh, you expose, like for, uh, if I have uh, Apache and I want to um, allow world to access the port 80, uh, I can uh, like uh, expose the port 80 of the Docker uh, of container on the host, okay. so it's it goes directly. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have uh, installed uh, installed the required packages. Here we can do this, and also so we will be using this those command, but I'll I will be doing them. The, so, uh, as I said, um, uh, Docker container is using a couple of kernel features. And uh, one of those uh, is called namespacing, meaning that uh, for various um, <coughs> kernel resources, uh, we can create a private, um, private space for it. Uh, in this case, we have like a process or PID uh, namespace. So when we uh, when we uh, use command ps uh, ix in the container, we see that there's bash with PID one. But when uh, oh. but uh, when we do ps ix uh, command on the host. We can see that we can't see because I don't have. All right. Yeah. Here we can see that um, 
Yeah. Oh, what's... Okay. So I help yourself a little bit. So I have one, uh, one more process running inside. Uh, and here I see. So, uh, the Docker daemon created a new container, like uh, started base application inside the container. We've uh, set up the Linux kernel features. I, I created a new process inside. And uh, here I can see that, um, uh, here I can see that the, oh, this is terribly broken, but, All I wanted to really show that the, when you are do the PS on the host, you see the you see the exactly the same process, but be, but with different PID. Yeah, that's all I wanted to show. So inside the container, the bash thinks it has the PID one, but actually it's uh, different. So uh, as opposed to virtual machines, uh, when you are when you start virtual machines, you usually see. Uh, one process per virtual core of the virtual machines, but here you see the exactly same processes as in the container. Another thing is, uh, uh, as I talked about, there's uh, network namespace, meaning that a Docker will create virtual network interface on the Docker bridge and as assign the private IP address and the uh, and the container doesn't have access to the host the networking by default. Uh, and other features, for example, host name, con container has also different host name than the host. Yeah, and so on. Uh, and uh, to the question about the resources, when I now, when I exit the container, um, the it will be automatically removed as of because I specified the uh, RM command. But um, for example, if oh, wait, just oh no, it it doesn't really help, right? So I can do this. It's better, right? Uh, so when I specify, for example, the memory switch. And I'll say that this container will have a maximum of 256 megabytes of memory. It will doesn't have more, right? So uh, for this, uh, Docker is using C groups or control groups of kernel feature where you can limit uh, memory, CPU, or disk I/O, and so on. Yeah, you specify CPU weight, and um, uh, it's uh, it's kind of the, with the CPU. It's kind of complicated because you define the whole uh, processor time the Docker can use, and then you you specify like portion of the processor time the each, uh, each container can consume. Uh, so we need to. Uh, yeah. Uh, exit from within the Docker. Uh, all the all the installed uh, packages from before will be are done. Are done because I've specified the arm command. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, because if I don't uh, and I and I ex exit the bash process, the bash process stops. But so the container stops, but it will stay stopped on the host uh, unmodified. Okay, but with rm. Yeah, with uh, RM, everything is gone. Yep. And uh, does the container or the processes in the container know about this memory limit or it's transparent? It, it doesn't know. It's it's like, uh, re like, like you have really only 20, uh, 256 like installed memory. So okay. it's. So that's, uh, that means that it's just a limitation of the size of the container. It's still the limit of the memory consumption. And, uh, and if the process exceeds the limit, then it starts. Yeah, um, it depends on the application, how we can handle uh, memory, like if uh, it's C application and you are, ha uh, you you need to have uh, like malloc's failing handles, right? So you can, 
Yes. So uh, now, well, right, well, it will fail in the process. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it would do uh, also when uh, your memory would run out. Uh, there is no sweeping. I don't know how. Yeah, this. Uh, yeah, this because that, that doesn't seem robust to me. Like if I want to make it robust, then I want the application to work within the limit, but not affect the rest of the host to the operation system. You know, know what I mean? Like if I have uh, ten Docker uh, instances running, ten Docker. Uh, containers and I want to limit all of them uh, so they don't consume memory which is intended for the rest of the Docker uh, containers but I want still the one application maybe to slow down because it's wrapping or whatever but to, to work um, because if I limit it like this and the malloc will fail I need to have that application be ready for it and hopefully it is but it doesn't mean it is it should be yeah. like it will um, uh, yeah, it's it it should be and uh, like um, if an um, application crashes when there's 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 not enough memory, it's bugging the applications, right? Because uh, in the uh, I said C groups, so you can like in when you are running system with system D, like every process you run, you can uh, you can uh, restrict its resources with C groups, like in the system D file. So like you can always say let. Uh, that uh, Apache will always get um, only maximum one, gi one gigabyte of RAM and never more. So if if the application can't handle it, it's back in the applications. It must uh, handle it. So it's like um, I don't know. If my notebook has only if, uh, like uh, one gigabytes of RAM physically. Yeah, I understand. It's setting some high expectation to the application in my eyes. So I can imagine it could be more robust. It could be like somehow transparent and limit the application. Uh, no, really. Um, the it might limit the old uh, old uh, world kind of applications because uh, currently like new world or the cloud applications should work like they should have uh, like plenty of small workers so they are easy, uh, so they can scale easily uh, scale uh, horizontally easily so uh, it's it's not actually a problem. Like, right, if you have some, I don't know, uh, prehistoric Oracle database which can run only in one process, so, and you want to scale it, you need to add more RAM. Yeah, so it's, it won't work well in this, so in this uh, containerized world. But when your application is like uh, plenty of small nodes, it's, it's perfectly fine. Yep. Yes, you can bind mount the volume, <laughs> so you can you can uh, make uh, some directories from the host accessible to in the container. Because yep. by default there are, there is uh, there's extracted the Fedora image. Uh, we download it, but it has nothing in common with the host. Yep, it's uh, incorrect. Yep. Yeah, uh, that's a big question actually. You can do uh, you can do it in plenty of way. Usually, you mount uh, external storage to the to the host where you're running containers, and uh, with uh, systems like LVM or BTRFS, you just create the snapshots or, or uh, you create the thin volumes from the storage to the container uh, to the container. So to, uh, basically, I mount some something from the host. The yeah, uh, the Docker can create like a similar to virtual machine. You can configure that uh, when when the new uh, the new virtual machine will create new LVM thin volume. Uh -huh. So you can do the same with Docker. Okay, so let's move a little bit as we don't have much time left. So yeah, this is just the, you, you can uh, try this example. You can install, for example, Stress. It's a small application for like exhausting resources, for resources of your computer. You can uh, configure to, to it to consume one gigabytes of memory. And on the host, uh, you can watch the system, this CGTOP command, where, which displays the actual usage of the CPU, memory, and disk of the processes or the C groups, like on the C group. So you can exercise for home. You want? 
Okay, so let's uh, move to the more practical part of the Docker. And uh, for example, usually when you uh, when you want to run a Apache service <coughs> uh, in the container, you don't want it uh, to be running on the on the f uh, foreground. Uh, to run the application, the background just simple add uh, D switch, right? And here we have uh, nginx. Uh, image which is simple web server and uh, when you start this web server we don't specify command because the image itself already has the command specified and when you create uh, when you create this container and uh, run docker ps you see that the docker in the, uh, the command in the docker image uh, specified to be run is exactly this one it's good practice to run um, processes in the containers on the foreground. So when you use a command like docker logs, all the input or the logs from the container is easily accessible, right? So you don't uh, need to look for the log files inside the container, but everything is in the foreground, so it's uh, easy to work with. So docker logs, that means that you see what, like everything was yeah, yeah. Uh, and other stuff what you can see in the Docker PS command are the ports. Uh, Docker file or Docker image can expose uh, ports uh, which uh, the daemon is supposed to listen on. But when you don't uh, specifically allow the exposing of the ports during the creating of the container, it won't be allowed. So here I started the Docker run just with the DN name and image. Uh, Docker PS says that the ports are exposed, but when I try to when I would try to connect on the local host for eighty, it, it wouldn't work. So, is there, so that means that. Uh Uh, I don't know how much you can modify running container. You usually <coughs> configure the container when starting it. Right? We, the run command has uh, plenty of options for resources, for ports, and so on. So you specify what exactly you want, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's uh, it will be configured uh, during the creation of the container, and when it's run, I I, I I'm not sure what is configurable during runtime. You said that uh, if you allow to access this port, uh, it will be accessible uh, to the local host on the host machine. So uh, if I start few HTTP demons, I can start all of them in one port, yes? You can't, yeah. It, um, uh, on the same port? Here? Uh, no, you can't. You can't uh, run the multiple service on the same port. Uh, you need... Uh, What's uh, in this example, what's done is that uh, as, I, uh, as I shown you, the, uh, the container has a local IP address and it's listening on, uh, and the ports are listening on that IP address. Mm -hmm. So from the local house, I can do type the, uh, the private IP address colon port name and it will work because the bridge is on my host, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, to expose, ports like for the world or so uh, so user in the internet can connect to the container I need to expose the port and expose it on the uh, host like on all interfaces like uh, star double uh, colon 80 so yeah this is done with the there are two commands for that one command is P uh, capital P which like publishes uh, all exposed ports from the Container to the random high ports of the host, right? So the uh, when I connect to the local host three two seven six nine, I'll go. I'll get the output from the port eighty in the inside the container, right? And here I can. Uh, it also it also modifies the Docker PS command, 
And uh, another one is the small p where I say that uh, I want just the port 80 from the container be available on the host port 80, mm -hmm. right? So again, here you can see that port 80 is exposed, but 443 no, not. So this is how us usually configured networking. Any questions? Yep. Uh, can I connect somehow on already started uh, the current image? Uh, for example, uh, I will start uh, the engine, Nginx uh, process and uh, uh, running on the ground. And uh, lately I want to see configuration or some part inside the, the, the core how to do it. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I'll skip a few slides and show you that just because we are running out of time. Uh, you can uh, link containers together. So uh, in the previous examples, I created MariaDB uh, container without exposed any ports. So it's only uh, localhost. And uh, I want to add the WordPress uh, container using the uh, MariaDB. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, uh, yeah, I use link parent options, which creates like, which enables to uh, communicate the two containers on the private interface. And also it injects uh, the environment variables called, uh, here, here is the, this is name of the MariaDB container. And I say, I want to link it as MySQL alias. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in the WordPress, my WordPress application, there will be some variables like MySQL, <laughs> uh, underscore, IP, and so on. MySQL, underscore, port, and so on. So in the WordPress, I can use those variables and connect to the uh, MariaDB container. Start bash, uh, bash uh, running inside, uh, inside uh, MariaDB container is impossible. Not really. You can. Um, uh, yeah, Docker attach. I'm not sure what exactly. I'm not sure if it the it is works. What uh, mm -hmm. he's asking. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it. I think it only connects to the output. But if you want to start the new process inside the container, like in the same group of the containers, like Bash, you can use exec. Do you have the bash process so the bash application available? In yeah, the in the container. Yeah. So and, and then this does what? Like it will start a new process with the same constraints defined by Docker in yes. which is used for the container. Yes, in it will start the bash in the same C group, C groups as uh, WordPress. It uh, it will attach it to the same networking of namespace and so on. So consequently, then those processes will see each other. Probably yes. This is mostly for debugging. Yep. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so I'll. We have five minutes. So I would. Yes, it's on the. Oh, it's on the GitHub slash Yosef Karasek slash Docker 101. Yeah, you can get there from uh, from the schedule page for the uh, for the form. Yep, it's uh, yeah. Do you put again the previous slide? Mm, Slink. <coughs> sure. Also, uh, in a similar way as you can uh, expose ports. Uh, you can bind man volume from the host uh, to the container, as I said earlier. Um, what's done is, like, it is actually bind mount. So mm, the content is not copied to the container, but uh, there's like yeah, bound mount link created. And when you create the, when you change the content of the bind mounted volume on the host, it will be um, instantly changed in the container. So uh, if you want to serve uh, content uh, from the host in Nginx container, you bind mind the, vo mind the volume and it will serve the content from the host. When there is new version of Nginx or anything, you 
you download updated image, uh, kill the old Nginx container, and create a new one with the same configurations. So the data stays, and software is updated. It's similar for the database. Database should have a bind-mounted data volume with the, uh, with the database files. So again, when, a new, when there's a new version of MariaDB, you s stop the old container, download new one, start, uh, start, start it with the old configuration, and continue. It's working. OK. OK, so we, we are going to wrap up. If you have uh, any further questions, we have uh, about 10 minutes for it. Yes. And then uh, we're going to yeah. be done. Yeah. You can find us during the conference, ask us anytime. OK, thank you. Thank you. And the uh, last thing is so. Yeah, only on this one. That's for sure. Here's some scarves for good questions. I, I saw that you were active.